Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're a little bit later than planned, but better late than never. So welcome to Speak Up Monday. So Speak Up Monday today is a very special, very important Speak Up Monday. Maybe the most important one after the other 141 that we've done so far. Because we're here in beautiful Bali. We love Bali, obviously. And this show is about Destination Indonesia. And right now, as we're talking to you, we've gone down into another lockdown. So we had planned this a while ago, uh, Nyoman and myself, but what a great coincidence that, we're, that through lockdown, we're talking about tourism and a possible future for Bali. So if you're a person maybe living here in Bali, or if you're a person that has been here before, and you're tuning in from Australia or the US, or we've got one guy tuning in from Istanbul, go figure, right? You're wondering about the most Googled destination on the planet, and that's Bali, the most Googled destination on the planet. So tourism is the lifeblood of Bali, and obviously, like most places in the world that is based upon tourism, Bali has been heavily impacted. But there have been some... In astonishing stories which have come out of that, which we're going to touch upon tonight. Now, let me introduce my guest. So, Nyoman Santiawan, I think we met a couple of years ago. And, you know, he is what I call a kind of power player uh, when it comes to Bali and Indonesia, um, from the Pepito market chain to the Rama Hotels Group, Bali Tourism Board, and of course, you know, Raw Kitchen Bali, that wonderful place just down here in Brow. If you haven't been, the best salads on the planet, you've got to go there, Raw Kitchen Bali, and so much more. But what I'd like to bring is some things about Nyoman that you didn't know, right? So we're going to be touching on those tonight as well. And obviously, my name is Robert Ian Bonnick. I'm an advisor, and I help businesses, entrepreneurs, and coaches basically you know, become an authority in their niche. And with that comes impact and income using media, branding, and, and so on. So look, without further ado, thank you for joining us. Nyoman Santiawan, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for uh, Speak Up Monday. And um, uh, I hope, I know this is uh, very hard for Bali. Because of today, I mean, actually, the last from last Saturday, we never expect that Bali has another lockdown. And uh, as a, a a person from Bali, uh, this is very difficult for the Balinese, uh, also for the people who been working in Bali and grow in Bali. That is uh, very uncertain uh, during this pandemic. But we have to keep survive, and also to uh, try to be motivated how to be optimist of uh, to be uh, also growing in Bali and also to keep up our business for long run. Mm -hmm. And you know, diving straight in, you know, as I mentioned before, there are many people like me who are expats living in Bali who love here. We have businesses. Uh, some of us, you know, have our families here. I have my two kids, my partner Marina. You know, and, and we, as I mentioned, we've been here for maybe four, four years or so. And we've seen in that time you know, the landscape of Bali change. But we've also seen some you know, incredible stories, which we'll get into later, later on. But, but I think what is a great place to start, because you know, many people perhaps who are watching this now, you know, may have read your bio and have some idea, but, but you know, I think it's really cool to get to know you a little bit before we get into the main part of this, which is, so I guess my first question to you is, uh, is that, look, Nyoman, you've obviously done very well with business and, and you're here in Bali, but what originally um, brought you to Bali and where did your business career start? Okay. Thank you, Robert. Um, actually, I born uh, in Bali, and I'm proud as a Balinese. I'm a Chinese Balinese, and uh, uh, Bali is my home. And uh, we started the business from, uh, actually, uh, we are from the second generation. Uh, we're doing a family business. And my father, as a founder of Ramayana Hotels, 
He started from the 1970s, which is uh, 1971. We bought Ramayana for 7 million rupees. And uh, my father uh, from Singaraja, then he started uh, working uh, um, from zero that he has to even um, selling newspaper when uh, on the street, when he just started this business. Or he has a vision that uh, he wants to build a, a hotel from Singaraja where is mainly uh, at that time is uh, doing the uh, doing the more um, uh, trading of the coffee plantations and um, all the spices in Bali. So he has a vision 1971 to build Ramayana. Uh, we have started with the six rooms at that time. And uh, then from that, we are growing. Um, no, uh, it's very, very difficult at the time, of course, that we're growing up to uh, eight hotels up to that. And uh, we are from the second generation, me and my brothers, two are the elder brothers. We are growing the business from the hotels then we're doing retails by the year of 2000. Then we started Pepito Supermarket. And um, then also the other uh, chain with the mini marks. So, and, uh, and also we are doing um, a lot of collaboration with other partners, like uh, we're doing uh, Take Restaurant, it's Japanese restaurant with our partners uh, from Japan. And also we meat processing uh, from a partner uh, from uh, German. So we are doing um, uh, the halal and non-halal production. That's, uh, uh, we started from that. Then after that, we also, we have a travel agent that we merged with the Japanese travel agent uh, called Ramayana Tabikobo. And uh, at the moment, um, we're still in a surviving mode, of course, during this pandemic. Then um, uh, from that, we also doing a CSR program with the uh, Shalendra Werda Valley, because we know that a lot of uh, uh, elderly, uh, poor elderly people in Bali. That's why we let uh, our land for 2,500 square meter to convert into a, a free for elderly, a poor elderly in Bali. Because at that time, we know there are only two elderly places in Bali, which is uh, supported by the government, but is in a poor, very poor condition. So we are um, trying to give our um, charity things to support it because there are about 30,000 poor elderly at that time. So uh, during the pandemic, of course, this create more, even more people, elderly people uh, needed helps. And other than that, during this pandemic, uh, I built a raw kitchen, which is supporting the farmer, where uh, I know that uh, hospitality industry is struggling, including our groups also like uh, our hotels, is a lot of our staffs are not working. So that's why uh, we are creating to make some um, uh, chance of employment of our teams. And also we are thinking to do a raw foundation to support the farmers and also the poor children to get free online school. This is my, uh, uh, um, uh, things that we are thinking that how to support the local Balinese during this pandemic. Because uh, Indonesia, especially Bali, is the, the one who suffer most because we do a lot of lockdown and a lot of uh, difficulties for all the Balinese. And luckily for the Balinese, they are really, really um, uh, accepted the situation. But after one and a half years, of course, very, very difficult for them to accept it. So we have to do something else. So I'm trying to at least to get something for them to, to, to work, so to support this. And, and also, of course, um, 
with my wife, of course, see, uh, we are doing a external clinic, which support this medical tourism, which also supported the elderly, uh, uh, fund, uh, elderly foundation. So that's uh, about me. So I hope that uh, we can support each other from, from this pandemic. You know, I, I love hearing that, right? Because, you know, through this time, as I mentioned, you, what we have is we have the extremes. You know, we have people, and we don't name names here, but we have people and businesses which public opinion says they did the wrong thing. When this started, they just literally just said, we're out. They kicked the staff out and just focused what felt like focused on themselves and didn't do anything. Then we have people like yourself and others who said, you know what, like we need to do more. And you know, there's ways that we can reach out, there's ways that we can support, there's ways that we can join together, collaborate and so on and bring Bali up and to support the people that need it most. And you know, so people, just before this, this interview, when I said to people, look, I'm interviewing your man, you know, everybody had great things to say about you. And, but what I found as well is that few people realize how far you went in that area that you've just described. So I, so I hope that those people watching this now, either live or on replay, whatever it might be, get a, even from that alone, like a deeper sense of who you are. And me personally, I didn't even realize you were born in Bali. It's like, come on, Rob, 101, should have done your research. But hey, you know, it's cool. <laughs> So then, uh, now one thing that I remember you mentioned is there's also some work that you're doing with, with disabled people as well here in Bali. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Okay. Thank you, Rob. Um, uh, I'm fortunate that I have uh, a family members in my uh, family that uh, um, back before the pandemic, I found there are um, um, uh, my step son and stepdaughter who are disabled that um, they are come from four families uh, they are uh, the, the elders I think because of thing so they, he is creating four books at the moment creating uh, they, they so donating to the other disabled uh, Karuna Dita And uh, thank you, Nyoman. Thank, thank you, Nyoman. Thank you. Yeah, again, that one, you know, who has incredible businesses here, who's born here now, and I didn't realize you were born here, and take responsibility, you know, to, to be the stand for others who can't stand for themselves, which I, which I love. So thank you very much for sharing that. And look, so look, moving forward um, into your business. So like, what is it that drives you uh, and motivates you, right? When it comes to, when it comes to your business? Yes. Uh, yes. Of course, I uh, mentioned to you that um, to drive that for the business, because we would like to employ uh, the the uh, creating uh, employment in Bali, of course that uh, we would like uh, to uh, keep up our um, staffs as part of our member of family, and uh, we grow because of their, their supports. Without them, we are nothing. And uh, I believe that uh, we get it from my father, who always believed that uh, the teams are the one who actually grows us up. And we are always treating them as a part of the family. And Bali is always our family in our blood. Mm -hmm. God, and, and one of the things, another one of the things is that, you know, as we move forward into, into the tourism side of things now, you know, the, the Bali, and we were talking about this, uh, Halim Adi, Agustina Adi, incredible people doing some amazing things here in Bali. And we were talking about how Bali is quite unique because apart from being the, the, the most Google destination on the planet, you know, it's, it's retained its sense of custom. You know, every hour, on, on the hour, the call to prayer, you know, like the Triha Karana, you know, Binika Tungul Ika, all of these, they, they permeate 
daily life here in Bali. And, th- and those customs have been there for, for eons, probably since the beginning. And they haven't changed, which is something that we kind of love, right? Because it's, it's like a lots of places like this eventually get eroded a little bit and become more westernized. Where it was it with Bali? It feels like you know, like Bali's Bali. Yes, there's growth. Yes, there's real estate. But the customs and the uh, that that the essence of Bali is the same 20 years ago as it is now. You know, why do you think that is? Yes, I I I was uh, born and of course I studied here until uh, my uh, high school. And I found out that uh, a lot of my friends, they always um, uh, believe in karma here. And they are really um, appreciate uh, of the emancipation with the others. And we talk, uh, with any religions, we are really accepting it. So um, for Bali, it's, uh, it's like a magic island that uh, you cannot feel that on other islands. And... Uh, and I really think that uh, uh, for Balinese, they are really uh, put a lot of uh, times to for their prayer, and they always uh, accepting the condition. But they always keep optimists, and they are always helping each other. That is a uh, very make it very special. Even though that's all of uh, the like our stuffs is really uh, making the cultures of Bali uh, so different because of they are really putting a lot of efforts and like us whenever that we doing um, every year we doing uh, many ceremonies because we always remember that we grow because of the power of the island uh, the the God in here. And uh, that makes Bali different and unique. And the same is like our elderly, we're accepting uh, for all religions. Uh, so we, we didn't see that any particular religion that we accepted. Thank you. And then, so then let's move on to the, the Bali Tourism Board. So if you could you know, explain to us a little bit about um, the sort of work that you're doing with uh, the Bali Tourism Board. Yes, thank you, Robert. Um, yeah, I got uh, uh, lucky that it was um, because of my friends and also my, uh, uh, that we already worked together with Santrian Group and our Ramayana Group that I was chosen as a Bali Tourism Board uh, to assist, especially this uh, second election that was uh, committed how to, to make uh, the Bali Tourism Board also uh, supported by all the the businessmen in and business people in Bali, especially during this pandemic, how to make all the business people in Bali to stick together, and how uh, and also to uh, to to get I mean to to uh, get away from this uh, condition and um, and reunited how to think make it Bali uh, grow up uh, and uh, bounce back again. This is very important. We have to be united our forces and we are, uh, cannot be stand alone and we have to be united to do, to, to do it uh, together. Uh, beside this uh, Bali Tourism Board, I also involved in the CEO Indonesia, which is, uh, uh, I was appointed as uh, the committee that is CEO Indonesia is uh, consists of a lot of uh, businessmen outside of Bali, and uh, we are trying to um, bring as many as uh, businessmen and to invest in Bali and also to create, uh, also try to spend their times in Bali and try to support it Bali during this pandemic. And uh, picking up on that investment theme, so uh, what strategies uh, have you been following to attract investment uh, into Bali and moving like forward into the future? You know, what types of activities do you think should be done to attract that foreign investment in? Uh, 
I think there are uh, many things that we uh, actually at the moment we are thinking how to make a, a, a charity foundation. Of course, one of them is through the Raw Foundation. And uh, a lot of people would like to support this investment with the social impact and how to uh, uh, make Bali is uh, also more sustainable in the long run. So, of course, that uh, social impact education, uh, free education, also supporting the farmers, uh, hospitality, uh, is everything that the investment is has a lot of uh, social impact. It's very, uh, very good to attract the investor, especially the, the you call it a green investor for that. Mm. And you know, so the, a lot of work which I do, as you know, I work very closely with the Tamora Group, Tamora Gallery, Tamora Square, Jocko is, is obviously a mutual friend uh, as well. And you know, shout out to all of the guys there, of course. Uh, but you know, what I'm also noticing is that you know, working closely with Ichi as well, uh, that yes. we, we have this digital nomad revolution that's going on. Digital nomadism, remote workers, the realization that we do not have to be location specific when we work. You know, even here there's Julian Ulig, there's Sasha, you know, there's lots of people, Bianca, Raby, right, who, who are here from different a different country, right, who are setting up businesses, who are working independent of location because we have now a choice. Eric uh, Hayton, another guy who's going to be on here soon, has started an incubator here worth millions. And you know, there's accelerators, as I mentioned, incubators, startups. So all of this uh, is making its way to Bali. You know, Now, is this something uh, which you support? Is this something that you even saw coming? And if you did, how can we get more of it? Yes, uh, that's very good. Uh, uh, actually, now uh, the Bali Tourism Board that we are actually encouraged by the Minister of, uh, uh, that's why they can call it a Minister of Tourism and Economic Creative. Economic Creative that is very important that we, we would like to put up, uh, set up as a goal to track uh, investment also. That I forgot to mention that uh, uh, that's why we asked me as you mentioned that uh, um, digital nomad is part of that. Uh, we would like to attract more people to work from Bali. That's why they call it a, a, a slogan for work from Bali. And um, of course, uh, that also require a long-term kitas and also or a visa that supported uh, for people to, to work from Bali. I think uh, other than that, probably the, the government giving incentives for these uh, people who wants to, 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 to invest, especially on jury, uh, for this economic creative in Bali. Mm -hmm. And especially to support it, the small, uh, medium entrepreneur, uh, small entrepreneur called UMKM. And that's uh, uh, very important to um, make not only hospitality, so we have other resources in Bali that can grow up. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, you mentioned before that uh, in terms of this, these business networks, there's, there's one in Bali that you're chairman of, and also there's one for the wider Indonesia. And you mentioned that there's this joining together. You know, what can a big business, a medium-sized business do to work together in a better sense to increase uh, the, the, the business uh, tourism coming into Bali, for example? Hmm. I think, uh, again, with the support of this uh, CEO of Indonesia, that um, if they can invest it with a lot of uh, um, their resources and also their connection, they can uh, also make this uh, small, uh, medium entrepreneurs, enterprises to, to, to make like a, a, a small, small um, stores. Yet also part of that, that I was thinking that to support this, like uh, the farmers 
and uh, selling some of the products of the farmers through the raw bazaar or uh, through the raw kitchen, part of the raw kitchen, and also uh, eventually probably Pepito and also the mini marts. This is eventually that we would like to, to, uh, to train them, to train the farmers, the fishermen, and uh, using less pesticides and uh, getting uh, more, um, educating more uh, in terms of the, their techniques and, uh, and uh, get a better result in the long run. And you know that's that thing about the farmers. So we had, and I know you know her well as well, Evie Gozali, uh, one of the owners of Saba Bay, and you know yes. they were yeah great 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 family. And you know she was talking about you know uh, some years ago, uh, you know the, obviously the grape is grown here, the Saba Bay grape, and she showed me a map of you know how widespread farming was prior to I think a couple of years ago where it began to drastically diminish. And then part of this time, you know, is you know, is a way you mentioned before about this this retraining because you know a lot of the the older farmers have got kids now, which are growing up, which are of the age where they can now take on that farming business, but at that time it doesn't have the cool factor that it used to have. So part of the work that Saba Bay is doing is to reintroduce. And you know, you know, farming techniques, farming practices, kind of make it cool again, right? To to bring in uh, these generations coming up into alternative practices, which don't rely upon the the old uh, the old let's call it the old paradigm of tourism. And and I can see that you know through Pepito and through the groups that you mentioned, you know that you're basically you know you're empowering um, the same thing, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, we as a family that we are uh, actually encouraging this, of course, that we can become like the, uh, also uh, like a, a place to distribute and also the, if the good quality and also, and also uh, they are willing to, to get the same, uh, why don't we support the local produce? And of course, that is uh, we are trying to motivate the local farmers here and also the local businessmen uh, during this pandemic. Like uh, we have a friend from Mason uh, Chocolate. They are actually doing a chocolate here. So we are trying to put and uh, pushing that uh, in our Pepito and also like other places, uh, uh, including also like pots, um, also, Kawisari from Tugu that uh, we also trying to encourage because of the coffee and uh, also the honey. So, and other things that uh, also that uh, 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 we are trying to encourage also the tofu. Organic tofu is produced from Bali that we are trying to, why don't we just support it, this uh, local uh, produce that is a very good quality. Uh, and encourage and creating employment in Bali. That's what our vision also. Mm. Great. And, you know, part of the, the reason why we do Speak Up Monday is, you know, there's two things. <clears throat> One is people inspire people. And that, you know, whether they inspire you to do the right thing or whether they inspire you to say, I'm not going to follow in that guy's footsteps because of the wrong move, right? But people inspire people. And the other one, the other one, the, the other, I guess, leg that this show stands on is Binika Tungul Ika, which for those of you who are not here or don't understand um, Bahasa, is unity and diversity, which, uh, which to me is uh, empathy. And that piece is extremely close to me growing up in two kids' homes for 18 years in London and, and being thrown together you know, as a bridge between cultures for many, many years, right? So, so then my, 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 my question to you is that, you know, Bali is full of people from somewhere else, which we call expats. Now, you've been very successful in business here. Now, somebody perhaps who's maybe looking at this now, maybe they're in Australia, or they're in London, they're in America, and, and they want to get out of wherever they are because they know that they want to come to Bali, it's beautiful, it's got all these things going for it. 
and they want to set up a business. That, that they want to come here. They want to employ local people. They want to um, become part of the fabric, which is uplifting Bali, right? So then, you know, what would you say to them from the point of view of, you know, these are the things that you must do in order to have success? What would those things be? Maybe three things that come into your mind. Okay. So just uh, call, him, call, him, call him back. So, so guys, so we've uh, temporarily uh, lost your mind. We're going to bring him back pretty soon. So look, while, while we're doing that, and maybe uh, if you just ask Ichi Bella to call him, yeah. So right now, we're talking to Nyoman Santiawan. Now, Nyoman San Santiawan, this is for you guys watching on Instagram, uh, YouTube, and Facebook Live, is, is a huge power player here in Indonesia. And, and we're, 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 having, we're deconstructing you know, his life a little bit. And then what we're also doing is we're bringing that forward um, into, into the future of tourism in Bali and where, that, and where that stands. And we've just lost him temporarily. And I'm just going to check. Do we have him back yet, Bella? Uh, yep. Yeah, do we have him back yet? Recording in progress. All right, so we'll be having him back very, very soon. Recording stopped. So one of the things which... Hi, Nyoman, are you there? Yes, yes. I think I don't know why it's cut, cut off. Wonderful. Sorry. That that's, that's okay. This is live television. <laughs> this is what happens, live television, but we keep going. The show must go on. So, so, yes. the, so the, the last question which I posed to you was, you know, so if maybe, you know, you're from outside of Bali, you're an expat, probably just, just like me or, or some of the people here, and you're looking to set up business in Bali and you really want to contribute, you want to be a contributor, right? You want to employ local people, you want to help uh, the fabric, you know, of Bali rise. Not that it needs our help because I, I don't want to put that out there. But, but what would you say, you know, are three of the most important things that you must do if you're looking to come into Bali to set up business? I think uh, accepting their cultures, very important. You have to uh, mingle and also uh, try to blend with the culture of Balinese. So, uh, of course, there are a lot of prayer here that uh, you are willing to accept this condition. That's why Bali is very unique. And uh, that's why, uh, like us, we always, um, you know, uh, put uh, uh, in front as priority to uh, for this kind of ceremony uh, in Bali. Uh, and second, of course, as you mentioned, that of course, if possible, that you can um, uh, employ the the, the, the Balinese, the local, especially now is during this pandemic, they are really, really grateful if we can uh, employ them because a lot of our staff is actually crying because of the run of job. Uh, they don't have any jobs. So that's why we are opening some of our venue, even though we are running uh, at a negative cash flow. But we are uh, accepting this because we know that during the good times, we always uh, uh, remember their support for us. And this is very important. If you want to invest in Bali, you always have to prioritize the, the staffs and also the people in Bali. And uh, third, probably, uh, of course, that you have to follow, follow the rules here, rules and regulation that's set up by the government, and of course, also uh, based also in our cultures here. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, and um, things that we also have to put a lot of uh, social impacts for Bali. So we have to creating a better Bali. Uh, and make uh, that's why like our foundation, we always prioritize that how to make Bali uh, clean, uh, uh, organics, and also eco-friendly, and also to support our education here. Mm. You know, so uh, thank you for that, Nyoman. And 
two things come up for me. One is environment and one is government. So we'll go to the environment first. So a while ago now, I had another friend, um, Janur, uh, Janur from uh, Plastic Exchange Bali uh, on, the, on, the, on the show, on this couch actually. And uh, incredible man, you know, studied very, um, he's very global, you know, like he's, he's Balinese through and through but he's also been overseas for long periods of time and has an, an understanding and an, an, an awareness of what I would call in this sense like a Western mindset, a Western mentality. And what he's been doing with Plastic Exchange is that you know, he's been, it's more of a re-education in a way you know, of, of, of you know, how, we, um, how we dispose of our plastic. You know, so instead of maybe uh, you know putting it on the floor, you know we're 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 putting it into a, a separate receptacle, which is plastic only, and that goes on that recycling journey. So bit by bit, you know, and he's having tremendous success with this as it's just spreading throughout Bali, throughout the Banjars. There's another friend, Gil Petersil, who's helping him scale that internationally um, as we speak. And he's got a, a huge award recently that I can't mention. He said not to mention it yet. Um, but, but, but like, so he's really being acknowledged. And what I love about Bali is that there's some incredibly creative people here. So then my question to you, um, Nyoman, is, you know, and whatever comes in your mind first, right? So you're a very successful business guy. You've got lots of different businesses in different segments of the community of business. So whatever comes up first. So plastic is a challenge. Now, putting that aside for a second, what have been um, some of the biggest challenges that you faced outside of COVID, and how did you deal with them? How did you solve them? Yes. Uh, at the moment, of course, that uh, we are encouraging this uh, during this pandemic um, through this uh, raw kitchen we are started uh, actually during this pandemic that uh, we are uh, we have a lot of six seven partners which we believe that uh, how, how to do business to, together uh, and also make a, 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 as an example um, to make uh, Bali and, and, and try to contribute. I know it's not an easy task, but uh, we are uh, trying to be no plastic uh, and with the zero waste management. Uh, and of course, that uh, this raw kitchen, we are trying to make a raw bazaar, which supporting every, which we would like to do it every Friday, which uh, encouraging all the the the, the products uh, produce of the small uh, medium entrepreneur to to be involved in this, and who knows that we can also put this uh, and sell it throughout side Bali because at the moment of course the buying power in Bali is uh, getting lower and lower during this pandemic outside Bali is uh, still uh, growing in terms of uh, uh, number so we would like to encourage the produce uh, the products from Bali uh, uh, and uh, can be also well known outside Bali so other than that um, thinking to do a raw academy raw academy is trying to um, educate the people, uh, especially the, the children, because by educating them uh, from the early age is very important not to throw the rubbish and also the plastic from the, uh, the early age. Because like uh, my family, of course, my, my uh, daughters were study in an international school. They are already taught from the early age, but for a lot of Poor Balinese children, Balinese that they don't, they are, um, they don't know what is the, the, the actually the the negative of the uh, throwing the plastic, and especially during the prayer, there are a lot of plastic products was thrown to the beach and to the river, which is very very uh, um, unfortunate that uh, this also creating a lot of problems for. 
You know, one of the other things, thank you for that. One of the other things that I've noticed about you, so obviously we have uh, this mutual friend, Ichi and Kuni, and Nomad Essentials, which is this incredible, uh, better than natural, uh, you know, skin care, uh, detergents uh, for, for the home, right? Which leaves, you know, 100% biodegradable. And, you know, so lots of us know that here in Bali, the things we put down our sink uh, ends up, coming out into the river, causes algal blooms, and surfers have trouble, skin rashes, irritations, and all of that. So, so what they're doing is, you know, is literally, you know, going back into the aquatic uh, and, and picking and choosing and selecting raw materials, which are 100% natural. Now, they're not the only ones doing this sort of work, using, you know, latest technology uh, to, to ensure that the effect, the negative effect on the environment is zero or as close to it as possible. So then on that, you know, technological uh, perspective. So I noticed about you that, that you, you're, you're very forward thinking, right? So you're, you're thinking about the next wave, the next um, paradigm coming out, coming our, our way. But so if I ask you about technology, and the future or a possible future for Bali, which is what this whole Speak Up Monday is about, what comes up in your mind? What comes up for you? Yeah, of course, other than uh, education and um, this uh, impact uh, um, social enterprise, we are um, also doing uh, to support the medical tourism. That's why, uh, uh, because in order for people who want to live in Bali and to work in Bali, it needs to have like a, a proper medication, uh, medical uh, support. That's why uh, in Ecos Plaza, uh, which uh, we make also a, a plaza with an eco-friendly approach at Sunset Road, we also having like a Eterna Clinic, which uh, uh, my, uh, my wife is one of the doctor. Um, she's uh, specializing of anti-aging, uh, anti uh, anti-aging, and also aesthetic. Is uh, also the part of an anti-aging uh, concept is uh, how to make people also um, uh, with the check of the nutri uh, called a nutri uh, ethanogenetic, which you can check on your. Um, uh, uh, saliva, then you can have the result that you know what kind of diet you should do, what kind of uh, uh, sport that you should do, and what what kind of hormone that you like that you have to support. Actually, uh, encouraging if there is a good investment in terms of medical is very uh, very good for for Bali because we can create more um, not only his hospitality, but we can do like a more high end hospitality through medical. Got it, got it. And you know, we're talking about a possible future for Bali. In many ways, it's hard for us, you know, to move forwards if we're anchored or rooted in the past. It's like an anchor, like a ship under sail is trying to get to a destination and this anchor is, is weighing us to the bottom. We can't get out, right? We can't move forward. So, so coming back, you know, to Bali as it is now. Now we obviously, you know, we're in this lockdown period again. And, you know, we've got this vaccine roll, roll out. And today we're not going to talk about the, the vaccines and whether you're a vaxxer, pro vaccines and whether you're a vaxxer, pro vaxxer and all the rest of that. Um, but, you know, what do you think? And it could be a central government thing or it could be us, the local community. But what do you think the lessons, even though we're not, we're out, we're not out the other, other side yet, but what are the lessons that we could learn from going through this, this pandemic period over the last year or so moving forward? It's a good question, Robert. That um, I think what we learn from Bali that we are totally uh, depends on hospitality, and uh, I think we have to diversify. Bali need to diversify their um, uh, uh, the things that they. I mean, a lot of people have to think not only hospitality. We have to, in the long run, we have to have like this. 
part of that I mentioned to you, medical, uh, uh, tourism, even like education, um, creative, economic and creative, uh, also agriculture, and how to make this uh, product of uh, um, ec uh, so eco-friendly products like uh, like what Ichi did also with this, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things that is also very, very uh, unique for Bali. So we not only depended on totally on the hospitality. Mm. No, 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 no problem. I, I, got, I got a phone here as well. I always check. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good in your mind. So my, daughter, yeah. my daughter called. Because <laughs> he's stuck in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you know what? Because we got two, two, two daughters as well. And, and by the way, uh, <laughs> one of our daughters, um, she had an accident, and uh, and it was actually Nyoman's wife who gave us the best advice in how to in how to. She had this had this big bump appear on 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 her neck, but <laughs> oh, it was it was awful. Oh my God, but you know what, you know, like, which it's a great segue, I guess, in a way, you know, like being like a committed father, right, you know, and we can see, you know, what's happening in Bali right now, you know, like, what is it that you would love to instill in your kids, right, growing up towards a future which we believe is uncertain right now, or part of us does. So what, um, what is it that you're doing with, for your daughter, right, for, for your kids, you know, about, you know, maybe um, attributes that they can imbibe to, to best serve them going forward into the future? Yeah, uh, for my daughters, uh, every time, actually before the pandemic, we always take them, especially what, if every time there is a birthday, uh, actually I encourage them to also spend with the the, the children who are needed. That's why uh, sometimes we celebra celebrate the, their birthday in the disabled um, children's, the poor children, because they, um, I just wanted for them to know that they are so lucky to live uh, with this, uh, at the moment, of course, a uh, little bit of silver spoon that, um, that uh, I would like that uh, for them to feel that how um, for the the people who need it are really uh, um, uh, feel then actually uh, then I hope that they this become of a great foundation for them to support of the Bali Balinese in the long run, and uh, I'm looking that this uh, young generation put a lot of efforts for Bali and make Bali something, still something very unique in the long run. God, I, I, imbibe, I imbibe that one for sure. My kids, well, you know, half Indonesian, half English. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on board with that. So then, you know, I got a question, right? So earlier on, uh, Norma, uh, if you're watching Norma, this is your question, right? Norma, the Tomorrow Group, Tomorrow Gallery, telling him about this interview tonight. And he was saying, you know, Rob, if you could ask, if you could ask, you know, Bapak Nyoman, you know, what he feels about, you know, could, because we're in lockdown, right? It feels like that Bali perhaps is being treated unfairly. Um, orange zone, for the most part, Java, um, COVID cases are spiking and, and are quite large, you know, red zone and all the rest of that. And obviously we have, you know, the, 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 the letter coming down from the, from the federal all the way into Bali and the governor then issuing that letter and then the regencies um, eventually, maybe a bit of an arm wrestle, uh, being, let's say, uh, convinced uh, that they should also play by the same rules and then impose, uh, carry out those inspections locally in Bali. Now, the question that I have then for you is, you know, could the central government, this is a personal opinion now, could the central government be doing more, perhaps in the way of a subsidy uh, towards Bali, the governor and the regencies in Bali? 
actually uh we have a pre uh a discussion actually before the lockdown with the minister of tourism and creative Pak sandiaga uno and also the, the governor of bali and including us we are trying actually uh before the lockdown uh uh there are few, several things that we discuss of course the governor would like to have like uh, a support of the second hiba or a second uh, uh fund uh to support uh the hospitality and also the restaurants who uh haven't get the the funding uh before so, and also get a soft loan that we uh encouraging how to uh um you know bring up bali in their full services in the long run so we have discussion on that and um but unfortunately there is a lockdown uh because of the red zone in jakarta and surabaya and all the main cities what uh we are uh, actually want like that uh uh hopefully by next week that we are trying to to uh uh to talk again to the government the central government that uh, bali already ready for that uh to uh that because we we hopefully that we this is uh needs to have a lot of uh also the support by not only the balinese but also the expatriates and uh who lives in bali to really uh put uh, a lot of efforts to do to reduce the number of covid using uh, safety protocol vaccination has to be done almost uh uh 100% that we if we can uh once we open then we have uh, also a, a discussion with the central government that we are ready to open up the borders uh, for the local and also of course in the long run for the uh, overseas travelers also and i guess that's you know so for those of you who are outside of bali or perhaps inside of bali but not maybe on the same page so this morning you know that was released you know this uh, ruling that i think comes on the 6th of july which is if you're a, a foreigner coming into bali from the 6th of july you'll need to be fa- you need to pr- produce a vaccination certificate and also a PCR test a number of days before um, to show that that you are um, not carrying the virus at that time or not having the effects of it. Now I'm guessing, you know, from what you're saying, that that I mean, is this is this you think going to be part of Bali's future, or is this like a short-term measure to deal with a challenge? I think uh, we uh, in Bali we already prepare also like the uh of course like bali was prioritized by the central government before for the vaccination uh uh and also we already prepare for uh, the screening system uh that uh, already uh linked with the tourism board called paduli lindungi which you can screen uh if your people already get vaccination and enter to bali uh and this is prepared for similar like the singapore then they can when uh the hotel is already ready for accepting the 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 people uh, the tourists that already uh 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 screening uh through pcr or the rapid antigen then they have to go to that uh, particular hotels or uh villa uh and they are uh, also need to prepare uh the the system to uh isolate if there is a problem uh, and also to link with the 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 nominated uh hospital that uh to to isolate the 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 tourists or the guests and uh, also other than that we before the pandemic we uh, uh sorry before this lockdown we we are already wanted to launch the 14 days vaccination uh holidays uh for the short terms uh for the uh, domestic markets uh for the appointed hotels mm. which probably uh will be started after this lockdown mm. Mm. and look so th- 
I, I, I said that I wasn't going to venture into the vaccination debate, but what the heck? We're in there now already. You know, so, so look, there probably will be you know, some uh, expats. Let's call them digital nomads, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> I can see you smiling. Uh, there'll be some expats or some digital no nomads, right, who maybe are, are not really in line with vaccination for whichever reason. And they would love to come to Bali, but then we have now, you know, this uh, this ruling that you know that if you come to Bali, you need to be vaccinated. So, so I had a chat to one person to one person, two people actually today, and they were saying, "Well, Rob, maybe this is going to be uh, a way to like a disincentive for for the, for that digital nomad to come, because still in other areas of the world." Um, it's not mandatory yet. Uh, I say yet with a, with a question mark. And then people, even places like like Singapore, for example, you know, have come up and said, "Look, once we reach X amount of vaccinations within our population, we're just going to treat it like a normal flu." You know, do you, can you see um, in your in your in your in your crystal ball? You know, can you see that becoming? Uh, something in Bali or do you think it will really be pushed for a hundred percent vaccination of the whole population? I think for vaccination um, we would like to do like a, a point where to get like at least 70 percent for the total population uh, of Bali which uh, can create a herd immunity which is uh, if there are uh, um, cases in Bali that uh, is not uh, creating that. And uh, that's very important. And also it's a matter of the, also the borders. If you really want to open the borders uh, that the, the other countries need to accept it, our uh, condition, because it's uh, very, very, very difficult for uh, Indonesia or Bali if uh, the other countries also not accepted because of the number of cases. So if we cannot control the number of cases, uh, it will be very difficult for us to open the border and very difficult for Bali uh, if we are too long not to open the border because a lot of, as I mentioned to you, a lot of people already in Bali so suffer and there are a lot of entrepreneurs already out of money and they, um, a lot of my friends that I know, also some already sold their hotels just to pay for the, for the debt. And um, unfortunately, the banks not supporting uh, the hoteliers at the moment because of this condition. I think it's also for the digital nomad, they have to understand because of the, the pressure and also the, the things that given by, by uh, the outside of Indonesia or Bali mm -hmm. and um, you know that the, uh, the medical system in, in Indonesia or Bali is not as sophisticated in Singapore and also Singapore is a much smaller country and it's, uh, you cannot just uh, say that this is the same like Singapore so we are uh, very, um, very big uh, in terms of population it's quite difficult for us to to follow what Singapore did. Very good answer, Norman. Very, very good, uh, respected, and and I, I get I get the I get the points, you know. So thank you for sharing that. And there was one that just dropped in. What was it? It will it will come back. So okay. So with uh, so I have a friend. Halim Adi, right, who's the Bali hospitality movement. He's been here for a long time. I think, I think his family are half, uh, half, I think, Indonesian and half something else. Uh, he, he might be watching this now, doing some tremendous work on the ground, you know, when it comes to events, you know, to ensure that these events are done when they can be, when they can be done, but in the most um, protocoled, health protocol fashion possible and is raising money for charities here, there, and everywhere, is a really active voice uh, in, in this movement. He would love to meet you, so I'm sure I'm gonna end up putting you guys together. But um, from, a, I guess from an event point of view, so going forward, 
you know, something, you know, which I've noticed uh, in Bali, as you mentioned before, it has some incredible places, right? Uh, Geweka, what a beautiful place, like so many places, right? And, you know, where, where, we can, where you can do events, where you can have numbers of people together in magnificent locations. Now, is there any um, type of event, and I'll, and I'll give you a little hand with this one. So Chris Robb, another great mate, um, he was race director for the Singapore Marathon for many, many years. His first company was sold and became known as Iron Man around the world. So, this, so he's, he's a very, he knows his stuff, right? Now, what kind of event would you think, and let's go out of this lockdown period, let's go forward past COVID, what kind of event, maybe a global event or, 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 a, or a very powerful event, would you love to see in Bali that would help to um, not put Bali back on the map because it's the most Google destination on the planet, but what kind of event would you love to see in Bali of weight and power? I think uh, um, also like uh, we, we discussed with the Minister of Tourism and Creative is uh, we are thinking to do, um, of course, like because he loves like triathlon and uh, we are thinking to do a triathlon and um, also even Ironman or Ocean, Ocean Man uh, swim in Bali that uh, also how to, that Bali is uh, so beautiful to do this kind of event running, swimming, cycling, uh, even next time is for hiking, I don't know. And beside that, you can do events like uh, cultural events. Uh, and also, um, you can do a digital events if you, if you can do that will be make Bali even more famous and how to bring, uh, you know, to push Bali in uh, and also to um, support Bali uh, to, for recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, that will, uh, other than that, probably is uh, um, medical events, which uh, Bali can become like a place for retirement and also for people to live here because we need a number of population here. So next time we are not dependent totally on the uh, tourism, but we can have more people who live here that can support the economy. You know, just for the people watching, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook. So <laughs> I didn't know, right, that no one was going to... I mentioned Chris Robb because he's a good mate and he's a great guy, but I had no idea that that was the sort of event that you'd like to see here. It was not set up, guys. That was purely organic. I love that. <laughs> so no, I'm definitely going to put you in touch with him. So uh, what else? <laughs> so what, what, what else came in? So, um, so Chris Robb, okay. So... All right, so infrastructure. So this is another big, big one. Future possibility of Bali. So infrastructure we know have, has challenges, right? So, so what would you like to see or uh, what can you tell us? If you can tell us anything on, on, uh, on the infrastructure of Bali and is it going to be uh, moved or changed or uh, improved in some way, shape or form going forward? I think uh, in terms of infrastructures, of course, uh, the governor of Bali, because he is from Singaraja, he wanted to have the, you know, uh, on the north of Bali, creating more um, accessible. Uh, so uh, he's trying to make uh, also like connection from south to north, which is, uh, uh, that's why uh, we get, uh, he's trying to make this uh, uh, a road to reach uh, to, the, to the north uh, faster, because by creating uh, this infrastructure, it can create uh, more sense for uh, the north of, which is Singaraja and, um, you know, also on the east on Karangasam, uh, through the harbor, if we can have like connection with the harbor, so we can have like a, also in, a, in the long run, have like a, um, you know, cruise ships and so on to, to enter Bali. And 
there are also discussion of the 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 airport, which is but I'm not really sh- pretty sure at the moment because of this pandemic. A lot of um, the government's money is put into the how to control this this pandemic, but it will uh, make sure. Uh, of course, that the government really put a lot of effort for the infrastructure to make Bali is more easy to travel. Mm-hmm. Got it. And uh, a, 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 a few more questions. So. Digital nomad. So I have a I have a great great friend, uh, Alumide, Alumide Gabenro, Alumide. Um, he's like the digital nomad leader, right, in Bali, or one of them. But I think he's a, probably the, the the biggest one. And um, and then so Alumide, um, why you Tofik, why he was driving this, and obviously Ichi uh, were or still are um, very strongly involved in petitioning uh, for this digital nomad visa. And you know. So just asking you, because obviously we've established that this digital nomadism, this knowledge worker, this freelancer, this startups, uh, and so on, is a future, possible future of Bali, which is already taking off. You know, uh, do you know um, where that is up to? Is it being discussed in the circles that you are in, that digital nomad visa or that startup visa? For the digital, there are no particular. I mean, uh, there uh, there is no uh, call a digital nomad visa, but there is a uh, a visa that is uh, given by the government by call uh, visa two one one, which uh, people can stay in Bali for or Indonesia for up to six months, uh, and this is uh, of course it is uh, you can when you apply it's a maximum sixty days. And after that, every month you can extend it up to six six times, or uh, up, uh, up to six months. And other than that, you have to do like a kitas, which is you have to get a sponsor, or you you can set up like a PMA or a foreign investment company. Mm-hmm. And then you know for for the, and this is a personal vision now, uh, which we've touched upon I think or, or, already. You know, like when we're looking at. A possible future for Bali. Now, is there anything else? And this could be businesses working together to create. This could be government having more input. Uh, it could be um, yourself in the when it comes to the different business networks that you spoke about here in Bali and Indonesia, like a wide a wide view. So the question is: is that Infrastructurally speaking, which can also mean telecommunications and so on, you know, infrastructurally speaking, is there anything that you see or you believe will be vital for Bali going forward to reach its best possible future? I think, yeah, for this, uh, of course, that uh, Bali has to be still always to be unique and also uh, we have to maintain the cultures we have to maintain the the village of the tradition uh, and of course that we have to maintain the the local businessmen and also the uh, because uh, uh, traditionally they also trying to support the economy of Bali and uh, probably it will be good for the other um, businessmen or other investment um, to collaborate with the uh, local people here. So uh, it can be gel and also try to support uh, Bali in, uh, in the long run. Got it, Newman. Now, now, so we're uh, drawing this uh, th- this Q and A. Ideally, we're going to get a chance to do to do more. I've really enjoyed yeah. getting to know you a little bit more, mate, and uh, and and, uh, and asking maybe a few difficult questions, but not too many. <laughs> I, was, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was taking it easy on you. <laughs> I want to come back and do this again. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, so look, uh, how we end the show is that we end the show with you, the guest, and uh, and in about a minute and a half, two minutes, uh, you know, we give you the opportunity to either say uh, say something which perhaps you may have said already that you want to reinforce, or it might be something else that you want to leave people with. Right. So uh, again, it can be anything that comes into your mind, right? And then after that, okay. after that, we'll we'll close the show. So you've got about a minute and a half to to, to think about it. All right. So so just think over there. Okay. In the meantime, okay. now, so if you're watching this, Speak Up Monday, this has been uh, this has been a very special one for us because it feels like when we started this Speak Up Monday two and a half years ago at Tomorrow Gallery, life in Bali with my beautiful girl Marina and our little kids, right? It started off as a place for inspiration, uh, you know, where three friends of ours um, in the past committed suicide for different reasons. We didn't see it coming. These guys look good, smell good, had everything going for them, right? So Speak Up Money has always been about inspiration and motivation, and that comes in different ways. It can be through business. It can be through coaches, entrepreneurs, leaders of different descriptions, right? So now... If you haven't joined our community, it's Speak Up, one word, Speak Up Monday Group on Facebook. So Speak Up Monday Group on Facebook. That's probably uh, the easiest way to kind of join us. We do... two to three streams a week. Usually we're doing it live uh, with an in-studio audience and your mom would be sitting right next to me here, but we can't do that today. <laughs> Where are you, your mom? Uh, right, we can't, we can't do that today, but we'll do it another time. So, so yeah, just remember, um, keep your eyes peeled. We've got some great guests coming and they're always entrepreneurs, leaders and coaches. And again, you know, that's what I do. I'm, I'm, I am a, an advisor. Uh, helping to become authorities in their niche using media, events, and a whole bunch of other different things. And uh, I just want to shout out to the Tomorrow Group, Jocko, if you're watching this, good day, mate. Mark and the crew, uh, thank you for your support over the years. And it's been a, if you haven't been to Tomorrow Gallery yet, uh, if, if you have family, make sure you go. It's the first edutainment lifestyle shopping village in, in Brower. Make sure you visit that. If you haven't been to, you know, Raw Kitchen, Raw Kitchen Bali, that's on the way to Semenyak, on like Batu Belig, go and check it out. It's one of Nyoman's places, delicious food, great vibe. Paulus, another great guy who's Nyoman's partner there, is a beautiful human being who I met four years ago when I first got to Bali at the Hard Rock Cafe, one of the one GM there. So there's some, there's some sp- incredible places and if you're thinking about coming to Bali, you know, I am a huge advocate for Bali, as you can tell unashamedly, <laughs> unapologetically, if, if you're thinking about coming to Bali, reach out to me and I'm sure I can help you either find a way uh, to get through or find a 40-something interviews different, you know, from the co-founder of Gojek, Mikey, if you're watching this, good day, mate, trust you're doing well, an incredible human. And again, all sorts of different people every week. Yeah. So, woo, it's been an absolute pleasure. Nyoma. Coming on, and, and we went through a few technical challenges in the beginning. I know. And, and, oh my God, that's one thing we got, we got to get. I think in Bali, a little bit more, a broader network. Get get some satellites just for Bali, right? <laughs> so we can have. We're so we can have super stable internet all the time. That could be one thing that we could put on the. On on the, on the Santa's hit list, but mate, thank you. You've been an, you've been an absolute pleasure. I look forward to doing this again in person with you, and, and look love to you, your family, your wife, beautiful wife Rosa, and your kids, and and all the best to the Pepito businesses. Uh, now we know when we do go there uh, where the money is going. Right, it's not just going to someone's pocket. There's a lot of a lot of charities which are being supported. There's a lot of good works being supported by someone who's from Bali lives in Bali, who cares about Bali and supports Bali. So just remember that guy. Oman, over to you to see us out. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you. (laughs) So, so, man, you've got your minute, your minute, you've got your time to say whatever it is you'd like to say. The line is broken. Breaking up. So the, we're going to get the line back. Are, are we back? Can we, can we hear you, Norman? 
All right. So it's been unusual to speak up Monday. <laughs> So why we get Nyoma back to see us to see us out tomorrow morning, uh, Tuesday, 7 a.m. We have uh, an incredible uh, Speak Up Monday on Clubhouse. We do it every Tuesday. World famous uh, Gregory Landsman. Gregory is an amazing soul in the beauty uh, industry and has an amazing life. It's all about resilience, which is what we need right now. So that's on... That's on Clubhouse tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I know it's early, 7 a.m., so come and join us. It will be an incredible conversation. It's called, you know, How Stress Almost Killed Me and Then Saved My Life. So, Nyoman, I think we've got you back. Yeah, I think you're on. You're on uh, mute, Nyoman. We can, but we can hear you. Hi. Hi, Robert. We can hear you. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can now. Okay. So thank you, Robert, uh, for this Speak Up Monday. And so I'm very grateful that uh, I can share uh, my vision and mission also for Bali. And um, as I mentioned to you that uh, I'm very proud as a Balinese that uh, he, the things that if you want, um, I mean, the things that for people want to live in Bali and invest in Bali, we always try to think that what is the best thing that we can give for Bali. And we have to collaborate with the rules and regulation here and also the cultures and the things that Whatever business that we do, we have to try. So the technology gods are, sp are speaking to us r right now. So uh, are we going to try and get N Nyoman back? Yeah? Oh, it's coming back. So th this is all, all about resilience, people. All right, we, we keep going. <laughs> okay, Nyoman, uh, are, are you there? Yeah. Yes. Robert. Yes, uh, please, please, please continue. Thank you. Okay. So, um, thank you, Robert, uh, for the Speak Up Monday. And, and as I mentioned to you that I'm from Bali, that I'm, I'm very grateful that to have uh, to share my vision and mission for Bali. And um, I would like to say that if you, for people who want to live and work and invest in Bali, try to, uh, to do a social impact for, for Bali and try to be, uh, follow the rules and regulation and also try to accept the cultures of Bali because uh, that makes Bali uh, even very unique in the long run and makes 